Hey, so I'd like to do a uniform motion problem for you here just to show you how everything works. So remember, uniform motion is part of this introductory sequence where we're trying to translate all that mathematics you've learned into physics. So we're giving you a way to sort of read the word problems that you're going to see later on. That's how you'd look at it in math class. In physics class, what, we're re what we really care about is the physics. The math is something we just expect you to know, right? So what I really want you to do is to focus on translating a word problem into mathematics. Here I've got a sort of a guide for how to do that. That's how all of these problems are going to be. You should probably try to follow this as much as possible in whatever you do. And that way, you know, if you have some problems, it's something that will be second nature to you. A lot of these things that I'm doing, a lot, a lot of experts, most physicists would actually do, and most students will try to skip because it's not the big exciting math part of the problem. Everybody wants to get straight to the math. I know it's great, math is great, but you want to do a little physics as well. So this is the problem down here on the bottom that I want to look at. You know, you know you're standing on level ground as an airplane cruises 10,000 meters overhead at 250 degrees or 250 meters per second, and it's moving from directly behind you to directly in front of you. Um, and you can see it because of the contrails. If you have contrails, you can actually get a pretty good idea of where a, an airplane is, a jetliner is, at that height. Um, so you want to find out what the angle you have to look at is 30 seconds after it passes directly over your head. So let's look at that in our um, system. So here's our system, right? I'm going to set up a problem. I need to look at this stuff right here. Let's see if I can get this working ink. There you go. So we look at this part here. That's our setup. And um, what we want to do first is we want to look at this draw part. The draw is the important part here. Um, what it lets us do is it lets us get an idea of what's actually going on because when you're looking at a bunch of words, it's hard to understand what's going on. So a lot of these problems might look a little funny when you read them. They don't have a very um, Englishy feel to them. That's because they're trying to write the problems in such a way that you can't make mistakes, right? English has a lot of... Um, a lot of ambiguity to it, so sometimes the problems will be a little more specific than a um, than you actually need. So, let's see. What we have here, as I recall, is you, right? So you're somebody like there, a stick figure. And um, let's see. And let's see. There's directly ahead above you, right? So there's an airplane that's going from directly above you to some other point out here, right? And it's moving at some speed v. And you, you know you can draw the contrails if you like. You don't need to worry about that. So that's sort of what you need for a drawing. It just sort of tells you what's going on. Later on, we'll try to turn this into something a little more geometrical in that model. Um, not all of our models later on will be geometrical, but for this sort of problem, a geometrical model is probably the best one. Uh, so that's more or less what, what I've got to draw, and as you can see, I've drawn it there. Where I want to get to from here is I want to now take all of the data in here and fit it into this identification part. This is your problem identification, right? And when we do that, we look at things like, all right, see here the um, airplane cruises at uh, 10,000 meters. So I'd say something like the altitude. I probably shouldn't do it here because of the size of things. Um, is equal to is YB. So you want to name it, give it an English word so you can figure out what it means later on. Okay. Um, and you also want to give it a symbol so you can figure out what you're using down here when you're doing your math. And then just say what it is. In this case, it's at um, 10,000 meters or 10 kilometers, whatever you want. All right. Um, and it's moving at 
250 meters per second. So it has a velocity of, um, so V is the velocity. It's going to be 250 meters per second. Um, and it's going from directly behind you. Um, and it, oh, there it is, the cruising, it's cruising. Okay, so because it's cruising, it's basically keeping the same altitude. That's what happens uh, when an airplane is cruising. So you have zero meters per second there. All right, so those are two things we need to know. Um, the other things we want to know are things like the initial position and um, what else can we pull out of here? So we want to know the initial position. All right, let's just start with the initial position. And um, that is uh, x a, let's call it. And that has that same altitude, um, 10 kilometers, right? And it begins right here above you. So let's say that's our, um, let's say that's a good place to say that it's zero, right? So that's going to make our life easier if we choose a nice zero point. That's a pretty good zero point. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to find here? Uh, what is the angle from the horizontal 30 seconds after it passes your head over your head? 30 seconds. So even though this is part of the question, that's not what we want to find. That's actually data, right? So um, uh, we can call that dura duration or time or something like that. And... I guess I don't have the full screen. Um, we'll call that delta T. That's the amount of time that it takes. And that is 30 seconds. Okay. So those are the things that we want to put in this given place. Now, obviously, I can't write this um, smaller. Otherwise, I would have. But I can type it smaller. So there it is. All right. So that's that's a reasonably good thing. I made some different decisions about the names there. That's fine. Uh, names names and symbols are always uh, variable. They're things that you can change around and do whatever you want to. Uh, now we want to figure out what we want to find. We want to find this angle from the horizontal. It's an angle. And the angle needs a name. What you want to find needs a name and it needs a symbol. And so that should be a theta. Um, and you can put little things here like OB. So if you're going to call this O and some other point B, you can um, call it that. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Oop. Um, I guess I, I spoiled it, but there it is. I want to do a model. Um, the model in this case should be geomet geometrical, right? So this is my origin here. So this is point O. Um, the initial position of the airplane is at 0 and 10. So this is 10 kilometers, and this is point A or something like that. And you come over here, and later on it's way over here. That's point B, right? Um, we don't know what this, what this is. We don't know what that is. We know that this is 10 kilometers. And this is what we want to find, theta 0, B. Okay, so now when I flip that over, it goes to that. Um, so what is, what is the um, concept here? Well, I've sort of told you already. What we really care about here is the uniform motion. We can also talk about um, vectors and things like that. But we really care about here, what we really care about is uniform motion. Um, and so now what we have to do is we have to try to figure out what sort of equations we're going to use. And the best thing we can do for equations is to start with what we want, right, and try to relate it to what we know. So this is sort of a geometrical thing here, right? So this is yb, this is xb, and that's going to give us theta zero b. Um, so we can use that thing that you used in um, trigonometry, 
the ratio of yb to xb is equal is equal to the um, tangent. So this is just simple trigonometry. This is stuff you might have to review a little bit. Uh, we try to do as much as we can, but we have a lot of physics to do in physics class. Uh, so, I mean, we can't spend two weeks on trigonometry. So if you're having some trouble with trigonometry, go to the math lab and things like that. Practice a lot by yourself. You do need to get really good at things like trigonometry and geometry and things like that because you don't want to get stuck up on the trigonometry on a test, right? On a test, we're not testing for trig, trig stuff, but you can make some pretty bad errors just by, uh, just by screwing up the trigonometry. So if you find any problems with math, just practice, practice, practice. You need to practice until you don't have to think about the math anymore. And the only way to do that again is practice, <laughs> all right? I practice, okay? So anyways, there I go. Um, like I said, this is what I want the theta b. I know yb, right? Right here, I've got yb here. So check, I've got that. Uh, the problem is, is this xb is an unknown. I don't know this number. I had, I'd have to find it from something else. So that's a question mark, right? So in that case, what I want to do is I want to find an equation for xb. And, you know, we've talked about uniform motion in class. You've read about it. So, you know, the easiest sort of way to think about this is your final position in x is equal to your initial position in x, right, plus the x velocity times the duration, the difference between the difference in time between here and here. Okay. So, right, this is at zero seconds right here. This is at 30 seconds right here. So that's our delta t, right? So we pull down this other um, equation. Now we want to check to see if we have all of that information. Xa, Xa would be this, the zero kilometers. Vx is this 250 meters per second. And this delta t I just said is this 30 seconds. So we've got all of those, which means we've got everything we need to start actually working the problem. When we work the problem, you know, we want to get here to this uh, tangent theta b, so we have to work upwards, right, from this most recent equation to the original equation that had the final answer in it. So um, that's sort of what we do, is we just um, start with this, this equation here and pull it down, right? And when we do that, um, what we have is this guy to work with, right? And what we're going to do is we're just going to substitute, right? We've got xa we said is zero kilometers or zero meters, same thing, plus um, this vx, which is 250 meters per second, times this delta t, which is 30 seconds, right? Put all those numbers in and we put them together, right? And we end up with 25 times 3 is 75, and times 10 is 750, times 10 again is 7,500 meters, uh, which is equal to 7.5 kilometers. I don't know which way I actually work the problem, so uh, we'll see what we do. Um, and so uh, that's what we did there. Now that we have this number for xb, this one, right, we can do this part, right? And so what we'll say is um, theta 0b is equal to the arc tangent of, um, or maybe tan to the minus 1, I don't know what they use in classes, of um, yb over xb, right? So we just pull this down again, right? Uh, just modify it a little bit so that it's got the answer at the end. All right, and then all we have to do is, you know, input the um, numbers. So yb here is 10 kilometers, so I can put 10 kilometers there. Um, XB is 7.5 kilometers, so 
about 7.5 kilometers there. The units cancel, and that's important. Uh, tangent, arctangent, all of these all of these transcendental functions, sine, cosine, the exponential function, e to the whatever, they all have to be unitless. So this number up here has to be unitless, all right? And so that's equal to arctangent of, let's see, these guys have a common factor of 2.5. I guess that's a crazy way to think about it, but that's the way I do. So there are three 2.5s in 7.5. And there are four here. So this is arctangent of four thirds or 1.33, which is equal to 53.1 degrees. All right. And again, that's what I've put here. So we've got this 53.1 degrees, and that's equal to theta b. We should first, the first check we do is is this actually the answer to this problem? And the answer to that is yes, that's the answer to the problem. That's all we care about here is what is the angle, right? We're, doing, we're not asking, answering a cool question that says yes or no or something like that, in which case we'd have an extra step. But instead, uh, we're just finding a, a value. So we found the value, we want to go on. Um, so that's the thing we want, and there we go. Let's see, we want to check a couple of things. One of the things we want to check here is the units, right? We want to figure out, are the units okay? In this case, the units are okay because um, units of angle or they're either degrees or radians. All right, radians are what we're going to use in the long term, but degrees are usually a bit uh, more conventional. Um, uh, these are both unitless numbers. They don't have any real units associated with them. They're not um, physical units, but they are sort of geometrical units that you can relate to a circle and things like that. So that's one check. We're pretty good with that one. Um, we need another check, which is on the magnitude. Uh, so what we're going to see, say is, okay, we've got 30 seconds here, right? So 30 seconds isn't a real long time. So because 30 seconds isn't a long time, so 30 seconds is short. So what does that mean? That means that um, an angle greater than 45 degrees is reasonable, right? You just need to tell me if it's reasonable or not. In fact, what you need to tell yourself on a test is whether it's reasonable or not, right? You have to figure out, you have to figure out whether it's reasonable. That's going to be the way it is for the rest of your life. And obviously that's the way it's going to be on a test because I'm not going to tell you. So you want an idea of whether or not, not it's reasonable because obviously if you do it wrong and you end up with um, 89.2 degrees or um, 0 0.3 degrees or something like that, you want to know right away that you made an error somewhere and probably it would be, you know, in something like this, probably I'd expect it to be an error with um, typing a number into the, um, into your uh, calculator, right? So if you did 1 over 7.5, you could get a very bad number. You don't want to do that. So you, you want to make sure you test for reasonableness as well. So that's pretty much how to do a problem like this. It's not really complicated. Um, geometry, trigonometry, very important. Make sure that you get used to following this protocol because in the long run, it's going to help you. It's supposed to mimic what an expert does already. And, you know, one of the things experts do is they actually spend more time setting up the problem than a student does. So if you want to do better on your problems, you probably have to spend a little more time setting them up and a little less time just, you know, charging in and doing all the fun mathematics. Okay, so I know you want to do the mathematics. I do too. But, you know, first thing you have to do is figure out what's going on before you do the mathematics. Otherwise, you know, you might solve a really cool problem. 
just might not be the one that you want to solve. All right. So